been like a month. Yeah, no, no school for a month so far. Hey class, Mr. G here. Today we're going over another project. Uh, today's project is just perfect for those of you that are stuck at home, need something to do. We're gonna use some magazines to make a really cool portrait design. I did Beast from X-Men in mine, and we're gonna talk about that today. All right, so I'm not in my classroom as usual. Uh, today we're working at my house, you know, working from home, stay at home. So I had this idea of like, let's step up the normal collage piece and what can we do that to really elevate that as a project? And I was thinking, you know, let's come up with something fresh. Online got a couple pictures of some Marvel people that I like to draw and Iron Man was definitely first on the list, uh, followed up quickly by Beast. The, the, so Beast I chose from, from X-Men and the reason I chose Beast is because there's a lot of textural components inside of his face and that's gonna be very easy to do when dealing with collage pieces. Now Iron Man was my first choice. Problem with Iron Man is there's all this smooth texture that when you start adding those pieces of magazine over the over his face to color them in, that blocky structure doesn't necessarily play to the overall concept that you're trying to that we're trying to incorporate into this piece. So back to some basic materials. Now for me, best suggestion I can give for you guys if you have a cardboard box, cereal box, a soda box, uh, anything that you guys got that's a nice thin cardboard, uh, some art teachers refer to it as a chipboard, uh, that material works really good because it's nice, strong, sturdy, and can hold the glue and the paper so as it starts to dry out and bend, uh, notice how we get some some curvature on here uh, that does stand up a lot more and that's very essential as you guys are working on this piece because as you're working that glue is going to dry and it's going to start to warp that box so this just makes things a lot easier as i said magazines we've got several of these things laying around the house uh, and then we're going to dive into the project itself All right, so getting started on this part, you guys are going to need a sketch first. So we're going to start off with working on a couple sketches. Uh, I do have an Iron Man. I'm going to throw that in here just so you can see a quick sketch of what I'm doing. As I was drawing Iron Man, the one thing that I noticed point blank as the curvature of the face was not coming out the way that the picture looked. There had there was that offness to it, uh, which if you practice drawing a lot, you're it's a shift. It's the way that you guys are drawing that there's a shift in the way that the hand is communicating with the paper. It's usually because most of us draw at that slant, we're right at a slant, and we're not standing directly over the paper that we're working on. So that's why you, when you see an artist, they work on that tilted plane. And the reason that you have that drafting table, that artist table that's on that shift, is so that you can look on it directly. Uh, most of us are going to be working on a flat surface at home so working on a three-quarter view of a character your mind references those elements a lot easier so you see the cross diagonal shapes a lot easier so i don't know why but it's just, it just works better when you're getting that dead on look there's always gonna be that shift that doesn't play right to uh the drawing aspect of it because iron man is a very technical piece dealing let's let's deal with it with a uh, computer graphics there's a lot of polygons at play there's a lot of these flat surfaces that make uh the shapes that are congruent to the metal forming the way the metal is formed across his face and that makes it a lot harder to draw if you don't have some of the tools some of the, the time to really sit down and do it so for me i want to go with beast because there was a lot more um forgiveness in his fur in the shape of his face there's a lot more structure that I can kind of work around that is a lot easier for me to draw so now you have that image of beast again having an image next to you so that you can draw it reference the material as well as you're drawing it so if you were to work off your phone work off of a computer which is what i was doing uh have it up on a tv screen have it paused which i don't really recommend if it's on tv for a long time or picture out of a magazine go for those basic things that you guys have in front of you i do highly recommend doing something that you're gonna be interested in otherwise it's not nearly as fun to work on i do recommend something that is cartoonish uh because it already plays to that it's a drawing so you're just drawing something else you want to do your own character by all means never gonna stop you guys on coming up with your own stuff uh, but definitely want to give you guys some base materials that you're referencing uh one thing this i tell my students and this to me same thing when i was dealing with iron man as i was drawing iron man out that's one of those characters that's so iconic so identifiable that if it's not dead on perfect people are going to say something and you know i didn't want to put out my stuff and it's just like off and then i'm having a problem with it already and then i have five other people comment like hey man the drawing that you did kind of sucked i want to go ahead and nip it in the bud and move on to another character so get back to beast and getting ready for him now once you have your character drawn out let's pick our color palette uh beast is a blue character so i want to have 
various shades of blue as many as possible so i went through my magazines and i pulled out all those pages that i possibly could and i want to try and get as much blue as i possibly can in so many different shades so many different textures there not all the blues that i use are the straight uh simple printed blue coloring but some of it is uh night sky some of it is uh the body of a car some of it was uh blue hair from a, a hair a hair ad all these things placate into creating a much more uh visually interesting texture on your overall piece and that's what i really want to, to emphasize is that you have these characters that you have definitive understanding of the way that the skin is textured the way that the face is structured and how do we take that and we elevate that by adding in some new textures some new colors did i have to use blue no i could have done green and then i get hulk references uh or i could have done purple and that would just be something completely fresh um if you are studying if you know marvel history at all their hulk is not one color the hulk is actually several different colors uh there's uh then you have red hulk which is technically not Bruce Banner, that is uh, Colonel General Thunderbolt Ross, not Colonel. Uh, he was played by William Hurt in the Incredible Hulk movie. He will be cast in the new Thunderbolts movie that's slated to come out in the, in the future of the MCU. Little fan fact right there. Uh, but you're having all these different texture components and as you're going through and you're making your character, think about those things that you can add to the overall design that's going to benefit your character in the long run. So don't think that, oh, well, this blue is not the right shade or this there's too much texture going on here. That might work, so save it. Do you have to use it? No, but you still have it in your collection because it's better to have something that you can go back to and say, hey, I can use that down the road than not. And then you'll just be out. It's no fun to not have the stuff that you need. So once you've done your swatches and you've collected all your different samples, now it's time to get into the messy part. The messy part is where we're actually adding these pages to the paper itself. Now for me, as I was doing this, I knew that I needed to do, have a painter mentality. So I had to put down my base coats of base colors and then go back with the textural components, go back with those fine line details after the fact. So as I'm putting plugging in color, I'm putting down large swatches, but as I'm doing it, I'm still cutting them into smaller chunks of color so that I can get those shapes to turn just right. So on the side of the face, I've get that jawline structure that I want to get in. There's these different nuances in, in where the highlight was on the forehead, the nose, and the cheek on the on the high end of the cheek. And I want to make sure that those colors were one color where the darker spaces and then as it starts to fade, I get that fade effect down to the rest of the face. You want to have those different variances. So much noise at night you want to make sure that you have all those variances there so that you get a much more interesting piece you don't want that that hodgepodge mosaic tiling which this is in flavor of this takes that kind of same flavor into into play but i wanted to elevate it specifically for my uh for my advanced students from for my kids teach high school want to, teach, want to give them something a little more challenging so as I'm giving those different swatches down, I'm getting those different textural components, I'm getting that structure design in them, I'm getting all those different blues, I'm getting the variances. You can see that I'm actually painting with the swatches on the magazine. Then you start going into the fine line details and actually getting into building certain structures. So taking the ear and actually building uh, different pieces of inside the ear and I need blacks and need heavy, heavy dark blues to get that structure down and then using the lighter blues to finish the color and around it. And then finally, as that started to take place, going into the face this was the my, most time consuming part is building in all those ha hair textures so ad adding those hair texture components to the face and actually getting that full-on um beast the growth the the components of the beard the the hair and the way that the hair was colored and getting those different levels of blue and white and gray inside of that so giving those different colors and finally coming out to the uh the rest of the body definitely want to put that little X emblem on the neck. Reason being is he's an X-Men uh, member, so I wanted to make sure that, that was prevalent because there's some people who, um, you know, have seen all the Marvel movies with me and don't know that Beast was one of the X-Men characters. Not gonna name names. So uh, put all those those elements in there, and then you want to come to the eye, and the eye was probably one of the most tricky parts for me when I was working on this. And the reason being is because I'm having to create a glass see-through semi-opaque quality to it because the way that the picture was there have that opaque kind of uh, glass scene that you can see through it that there's something on the other side but it's just at that angle where it catches a little bit of light to where you can't see through it fully and just gives you that that 
bare ghost of an image behind it. Having to create black around that, and you're seeing that as I'm doing this, I'm layering bits of what is the glass color along with the eye color to get, uh, and bits of the skin to where then as I'm overlaying them, you're getting that light is passing through and light is being held up in certain spots so that as from a distance it gives you that quality that we're looking for but at the same time you understand that there's a process in the way that we have to build that structurally it's all going back to painter techniques so how are we building levels of color how are we building levels of design up and by marrying these different colors of paper together to where from a distance it looks just like the image that we were working off of or relatively close to it. I did take some artistic liberties on some of this. And then I'm also employing stuff for my uh, my surface design students so they get some textual components. My, my ceramics class, I'm also giving this project to them so they can get those sculptural components too where you're actually having to sculpt different levels of paint and you're having to stack certain colors together to get that finalized image uh, and these are also painter techniques we use a lot of techniques from different fields it could be a 2d piece it could be a 3d piece you're still going to use similar techniques it's how do you marry those techniques in a way that we understand across the board if you're doing a 2d or if you're doing a 3d we are still working with the same vocabulary and we're also working with the same processes and techniques lots of information this week lots of cool projects here this project took me a minute so if you want to do something that size it's gonna take a minute, so be prepared. Um, also, the level of mess that comes with it, I've destroyed an entire dining room table because I had to have all my little swatches of different colors out. So it looked like I was coloring eggs, but there was like scraps of paper everywhere. It was I could have come up with some other ideas, but that was what worked for me. So I hope this got to give you guys some interesting ideas and something to work with, something interesting to create. While we're out and you got lots of time being at home and all, uh, and that you guys can come up with some interesting artwork. I thought this was highly interesting for me So I hope that you guys can come up with interesting stuff as well I think I'm gonna spill a little more coffee on mine uh, to give it some more background elements I might do the whole yellow thing like the image. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it, but Got a project now Let's go ahead and wrap up like we always do take care of the homework which is to like subscribe share and all the various platforms get that knowledge out there to all of our uh friendly art peoples who want to get some interesting uh projects under their belt for no money at all this stuff is laying around the house for most of us and it's it's something that takes time and you can watch a lot of tv while you do it took me about five episodes of tiger king and two other programs at least maybe a movie do i watch a movie Probably. I've watched a lot of TV because, you know, we're out. Here that homework. Other than that, uh, as always, if you guys have a question, comment, or concern, raise your hand down in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions for you. Other than that, I will see you guys next class, wherever it is. Good luck. Stay safe. Love you guys. See you guys later.